So the study is dietary macronutrient content alters cortisol metabolism independently of body weight changes in obese men. Um, so I just want to point out here that it wasn't, uh, they weren't on like a necessarily high protein diet enough to be problematic, which was, I think that 35% threshold, which was actually discussed in the meta analysis that you just went over in terms of the urea cycle. So in case anybody wants to look at what we're saying there, it was in the meta analysis that Jay just discussed with exercise, carbohydrates, and, uh, and cortisol. Um, so basically they had these two groups, they had a high fat diet and a high fat, low carb medium fat, medium carb protein was kept the same at about 29%. And then their uh, percent of fat in the high fat, low carb diet was 66%. And the medium fat, medium carb diet was 37% fat. They had 5% carbohydrates in the high fat, low carb. And in the medium fat, medium carb, they have 34% carbohydrates. So they're having a, um, they, they have, they're on essentially, or almost on a ketogenic diet. They have enough fat and they have low enough carbohydrates. Their protein isn't isn't excessively high, although maybe a little bit higher than ideal for a keto diet, perhaps. Um, so what essentially the study gets to is what you're gonna, what we're seeing is that, and I'll, I'll read these quotes, and I guess I'll explain. In obese men, a high fat, low carbohydrate diet increased whole body regeneration of cortisol by 11 beta HSD1 and reduced the rate of inactivation of cortisol by 5 alpha and 5 beta reductases. The increased 11 beta HSD1 activity in the high fat, low carb versus medium fat, medium carb diet was independent of, in, independent of differences in energy consumption and weight loss. The same effect was observed under fixed feeding, approximately isocaloric conditions, and the medium fat, medium carb diet induced substantial weight loss without altering the 11 beta HSD1 activity. Moreover, the effect of high fat, low carb carbohydrate diet was already apparent after one week of the diet when weight loss was minimal. Then they further say low carbohydrate intake appears to be the key factor responsible for alterations in glucocorticoid metabolism. Protein intake was similar between the diets. Compared with baseline, fat intake was only marginally higher on the high fat, low carb diet, whereas carbohydrate intake was substantially lower, so about 1,400 kilocalories per day lower. However, carbohydrate intake was also lower than baseline on the medium fat, medium carbohydrate diet, suggesting a threshold of reduced carbohydrate intake to mediate this, the effect. This is supported by fasting insulin concentrations, which were decreased by the high fat, low carb, but not the medium fat, medium carb diet and the ad libitum study and might directly alter hepatic 11 beta HSD1 and 5 alpha and 5 beta reductase activity. So what we're essentially seeing here is that being on a low, what the, and this is quite important. They basically are saying that it wasn't that the diet was high in fat. It was that the diet was low in carbohydrates. And the low carbohydrates led to an increased regeneration of cortisol by the enzyme 11 beta HSD1. So that's the enzyme that takes inactive cortisone at the cell and reconverts it into cortisol. And then the, the enzymes that degrade cortisol, which are 5 alpha reductase and 5 beta reductase, for anyone who's interested, 5 alpha reductase is the evil enzyme that creates way too much DHT that makes you bald, but it also happens to <laughs> degrade cortisol. What you're seeing is that the inactivation of cortisol in these low carbohydrate states is it uh, is increased so or a decrease so basically the body stops deactivating cortisol and increases the regeneration and this is at the cellular level so even if your plasma cortisol levels were fine even if they were you know maybe mildly elevated it's the same thing with the thyroid hormone situation what's going on at the cell well you're seeing a decreased deiodinase enzyme function at the cell in the low carbohydrate diet um, so you're seeing a decreased conversion of active thyroid hormone from T4 to T3, and then you're seeing an increased regeneration of cortisol by the 11 beta HSD1, and then you're seeing a decreased degradation of cortisol by the 5 alpha and beta reductase enzymes. Um, and the, what changed this the most was specifically the carbohydrate content of the diet. And why is this important? Because again, the uh, concept of stress that we're looking at here is that stress is a function of a lack of energy substrate or energy available at the cell given the current level of demands. So when you stop providing when you stop providing carbohydrate, you lower the anabolic hormones insulin and then you increase the catabolic hormones of cortisol and you increase the the upregulation of cortisol production, decreases degradation so you can keep that signaling going because you don't have enough carbohydrate on board to meet the demand. So again, it's coming down to that basic piece and even if your cortisol, which Rob is pointing out that the, the stress hormones aren't necessarily elevated on 
in ketosis it's like sure they're not elevating you don't see cushing weights but they could be norm they could be higher than nor higher in range and then at the cellular level here we're seeing them elevated so that's quite important at, as well and it goes hand in hand with the thyroid piece as well oh there's no hypothyroidism in in low carb ketogenic diets it's like there's not not from like a classical definition with tsh but what you're seeing at the cellular level yeah it's the same thing with cortisol Right. It's the equivalent of a doctor saying that you have a TSH of six, but it's not hypothyroidism until it reaches nine or 10, you know, whatever yeah. reference range they're using, which I've seen. I think I've seen people with TSHs of like eight or nine and the doctor's just like, oh, not until it hits 10. <laughs> <laughs> or same thing about like the euthyroid six syndrome, the impaired conversion. It's like, oh, you're not hospitalized, like bedridden, bedridden. So you must have enough T3. You're fine. You know, that's you're, you're just saying like this is essentially the equivalent in terms of cortisol, like just because you don't have Cushing's doesn't mean that you don't have cortisol issues. Yeah. And the, the, again, it's what is happening at the cell is driving the systemic processes. And so the right. lack of cellular energy is driving the signaling processes to say, hey, we like we don't have enough carbohydrate here, guys. We need to start producing it. OK, how are we going to produce it? OK, glucagon. OK, adrenaline. OK, cortisol. OK, growth hormone, growth hormone, etc. Like you guys need to upregulate. We need to start breaking down tissues. And then also the whole body shifts in terms of gene expression and metabolism. Just be like, look, we don't have enough cortisol. The brain really needs it. Or we don't have enough glucose. The brain really needs it. Okay, all of us are going to just oxidize fatty acids. Because if we try to all oxidize glucose, we're going to just burn through our muscle tissue. So like, it's this coordinated response that you're seeing in a large scale. And being the low carb diet is driving into this coordinated stress response. It literally is using the mm -hmm. same hormones, including glucagon, which you cannot deny is elevated in these states to to drive this this response towards uh, or this response of not having enough carbohydrate, which would be the I, ideally the primary energy source, which is why you have a whole hormonal cascade that regulates its utilization, et cetera.